Well, Lane, is it is time. It is time, mate, to stop doing this one thing. And then in the rest of this video, of course, we'll be breaking down all of Gen G rulers and same mechanics as macro decisions. So this will be a really high level analysis, hopefully. And what this video is going to do, because ruler in this game is playing in around platinum elo. And remember, this guy's one of the best AD carries in the world, a world champion. So we're going to try and figure out what this guy does against a platinum bot lane. And by doing these very simple few things, hopefully you guys can take these tips into your games and actually apply them to turbo stomp yours just like ruler does in this one so the first actual big thing the ruler does in this game well it's actually the thing that he doesn't do that pretty much everyone else does do even players in high reloads will do this and it is leashing now i understand that lots of people think that if you don't leash your jungle will afk guess what in my experience coaching hundreds of adc players no jungler is afk when i tell the ad carry to tell them that they can't leash or that they won't leash so don't worry about that your number one concern in any game if you're an ad carry is beating the enemy bot lane. So it's very important to understand that by leashing, you are sacrificing priority, you're sacrificing pressure in your 2v2. In other words, you're hoping your jungle will carry you rather than you actually carry them. So that's the first big thing. Tell your jungler, even if it's in champ select, that you can't leash. Being in lane early lets you get priority. And we can see in this game, because the enemy Kaiser and Yumi decide to leash Varus and Lulu, and remember, this is a double range, double range matchup, the priority is going to just secure the first few levels for these champions, and it sets up the early game. This makes it so easy to play the game, because you have the minion advantage, the level advantage, but getting priority just like Ruler does in this lane, that's just one ingredient to the big cake, if you will, of stomping the enemy bone lane. What he's doing right here is another ingredient. This is just called advancing, I like to call it. So when you're advancing, you're pretty much just moving towards the enemy side of the lane. Now, why would you do this? Well, hopefully we can figure this out, right? Ruler just killed three melee minions. This means the first red minion wave is really thinned out. There's only ranged minions left. So if a trade happens, because the blue team has priority, it generally should be favorable to them. Now in this game, because Kaiser and Yumi don't have the strongest level one in the world, Varus Lulu with this priority will win. Ruler advances in the lane. So taking into account minions, champion identity, maybe interactions, cooldowns. This is what will encourage you to actually change your positioning. Way too many AD carries here will sit back and do nothing with these advantages. Ruler, on the other hand, is looking to press that advantage. Now, continuing with this level one, we should still be counting cooldowns, of course. So Kaiser hasn't actually really used a spell at this point until she uses W. Now, of course, it's a little bit weird for Kaiser to start W, but she has done it. We don't know what a player is going to do until we're in the game, so we always have to react what's on our screen. So Kaiser, no W because this is on a long cooldown, this means that the Varus and Lulu have a lot of pressure now, especially considering the fact that they have the minion advantage as well. So at this point in the lane, when the second wave comes in here, lots of AD carries again, what do you think they're going to do to the minions? They will probably just hit them for no reason. Just chill, guys. Chill, 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 chill. You don't have to go nuts on minions just because they're in your lane. It's all about denying the enemy bot lane as much as possible. That's how you manage minion waves. So if Ruler was to just auto-attack these minions and shove this minion wave into Kaisa Yumi, if I'm Kaisa, I'm just chilling. Like, I'm happy you're giving me free minions. I don't have to run out away from my tower. I don't have to run into a level 2 Varus Lulu. I'm just chilling, collecting minions you're giving me for free. Ruler obviously knows that this would be too kind. So he's going to be a bit of a baddie here. He's going to slow push this minion wave. In other words, just last hit the minions. And this means this wave will stay out away from Kaiser's tower as long as possible. So if she wants to interact with the minions or fight Ruler and the Lulu, she has to run away from her tower. In other words, out of safety. But once again, one of the keys to doing this is to advance your positioning. Do not just sit back where your minions are. You can push forward even beyond the enemy minions, just like Ruler does here. And any trade at this point is good. Why? Well, what we talked about before, priority means level two. And as soon as this trade takes place, Ruler knows that he will hit level two imminently. So Varus and Kaiser are just trading autos and they're trading HP. As soon as Varus hits level two, because of that ability upgrade, he will easily win. Just another important point here, guys, your support, especially in lower elos, might not be parallel with you here when you advance. So make sure you ping and communicate. That is an absolute must. If they still don't do it and they don't listen to you, then you have to use that information and make the best decision. But Anyway, in this game, Ruler hits level 2 and gets first blood by skilling his Q, and that's the advantage that playing like this brings. Not leashing and actually positioning and advancing through the enemy minion wave when you are clearly stronger. Now, after this, Ruler just shoves out this minion wave and then decides to base. And this is really like the other thing I want to talk about here, just actually basing. So you have to understand, guys, that when you get kills like this or even just minion advantages, and we can see on the scoreboard here the Ruler has a big CS advantage, these numbers, these advantages, these 
these statistics only mean something when you actually spend the gold they give you. So in other words, if Ruler did not base, he is still a 0, 0, 0 champion with 0 CS because he hasn't spent the gold those stats have given him. So until that materializes, in other words, until you actually base and hit the recall button, you are still a level 1 champion. You always have to evolve, especially when you kill the enemy bot lane or they base themselves. This is the idea of matching. So each time you come back to lane, if you do have a gold advantage, you will be stronger just through items. And that's pretty much how a snowball starts. You keep coming back to lane with item advantages until the point where the enemy bot lane just breaks. And guess what happens when Varus and Lulu re-enter this lane here? Ruler ends up getting a double kill, but we still have to do a couple of things to make sure this lane is completely GG. So after doing this, what do you think Ruler should do here with this minion wave? Because I think he takes a little bit too much time here to do what he should do. So he ends up basing, which is correct, right? Going back on what we just talked about, matching the enemy bot lane when you kill them, or if they base. So you always want to try and stay ahead of them in terms of items when you return to lane. But Ruler here honestly should just kill the cannon minion and recall instantly. This would mean he would save probably 5 to 10 seconds of time and he'd be back in lane quicker, meaning that Kaisa, well, she just has less time to breathe on her own, right? Because Varus is always there when she's there. Ruler still does this in the end, but it's a little bit slow, but honestly, not a big deal. He gets back to lane with a significant item advantage. And with this minion wave here, kind of what we talked about before, right? Lots of players might hard push this. Oh, look at this juicy cannon wave and there's minions here. It's like an endorphin rush hitting minions in a way. No, 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 no. Deny the enemy bot lane. Destroy them. Deny them everything. Make it as difficult as possible for the enemy bot lane to play League of Legends. This is what Ruler does. He ends up slow pushing this minion wave and Kaisa and Yumi, because they are so far behind already, they legit can't even do anything. They have to run somewhere else because they cannot even be in this bot lane because they know they will get double killed. With the next minion wave, exactly the same thing. Just slow push it. Kaisa and Yumi cannot do anything here. So it's kind of brutal to watch from their perspective, but this is the difference between a challenge already carry and pretty much every single other player mentality and then the few ingredients we've talked about and what all of this pressure guys is going to culminate in is you getting ganked right because you're creating so much pressure the enemy jungler and remember the enemy bot lane is probably spamping you for assistance so the enemy jungler feels as if he's like obligated to come bot to save them that's again where this kind of alpha mindset of destroying the enemy bot lane comes into play again you want a 2v3 you want this mindset of you know what gank me we will 2v3 you if you come here and that's exactly what ruler does in this game as well. The Hecarim tries to save his completely lost bot lane here and Ruler ends up 2v3. Even though he might not kill the Hecarim, this is still unbelievably good because Hecarim is essentially wasting time. He's not getting golden experience and Graves is. So by playing like this, by having this mentality, you indirectly win the rest of the map as well. This is how you can have a global influence as an AD carry by stomping your 2v2. So the more you win lane, the more you win the map, the more you win the game. World Champion Ultimate, by the way. So take these tips, guys, into your games. Take this mentality into your games as well. Please, 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 please. It will help you so, so much and actually get you ELO rather than all like the tier list we do and all those champion videos. And of course, if you want more content like this, we have our website linked down below in the description and comment section, gameweep.com, where I myself and other challenger players and coaches, we will upload videos for your benefit to help you improve. We will point out what players like Ruler, Faker, Chovy, Canyon, all of them do that you can do in your games too. So thanks so much for watching. Any comments about the gameplay or the video, leave them down below. If you want more of these videos, leave a like down below as well. And until our next preseason 13 upload, this has been a... Peace.